Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Today, we continue our comic book movie journey through film, and it has made its way into the new year on a new day as well. Uh, first, first comic book movie episode ever released on a Wednesday instead of the Fridays. We're beginning that doubling up, and it starts here with Captain America, the first Avenger. It was released on July 22nd, 2011. It was written for the screen by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, and it was directed by Joe Johnston. I'm Colton Robertson. I'm joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? Oh, what up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you, and welcome back, Michael Muehlberger. What's up, homie? What's up, boys? Awesome to be back. Uh, love this uh, Love this rewatch. I'm glad you hit my line out of nowhere and be like, hey, let's do this real quick. Hopefully you're not busy. Um, I Definitely, shortest really, notice really... Yet. Mm. Definitely shortest notice yet. Uh, hit, hit you up uh, literally 24 hours before we planned on talking about it. <laughs> or, or, yep. So uh, uh, that, that was it was a pleasant surprise that you could join us. I was ha- I was happy to have you, and uh, I love this movie, man. Uh, I'm excited to hear what you mm-hmm. think. Let's uh, let's dig into it a little bit. How are you feeling fresh off this rewatch of the first Avenger? How long it had it been since you watched it? Oh, it's uh, it's probably been since it came out, uh, you know, back in 2011. Um, I probably have not given it any time since then. And that's why I'm so glad you like you asked me to do this, because I had no intention of watching it in the near future. Um, and so I, I came back and gave it a visit. And I absolutely love this movie. I think it's probably been my favorite one that I've done uh, far with you guys. I think I've done probably six or seven of these now, and this is by far one of the ones I've enjoyed the most. It was a very fun rewatch, uh, and I was glued in the entire time. I love that. I love that. Um, judging by where it fell on my ranking, I would say it's my favorite you've been a part of as well. Joe, how are you feeling about this movie fresh off the rewatch? You know, I've, I've always kind of been on Team Iron Man uh, myself, uh, and I've always kind of pushed Cap to the wayside. I don't know why. Um, I guess he was he was too good, like uh, almost. It was just too good to be true. But now now that I'm older and I have just these weird uh, beefs that never should have existed in the first place, I can just put That's them aside. Natural, um, I uh, No, this this one was, uh, was, was awesome. I, it was like the first... First time I could really enjoy a cat movie, um, and it's been it's been a while since I think I've I've watched this last. I mean, it I'd say at least like four years probably. Like it, I don't know. It feels like a long time. I get that. Um, I get that. And, yeah, it's, and, been, it's been a couple years for me as well. Uh, it it'd been a little bit. I'd let it sit for a while, and uh, you know we've talked about it a couple times now. Now that we're nearing the end of phase one of the MCU, it's the second to last entry in phase one of the MCU as the little mm. post credit stinger was the first yeah. trailer for yeah. the Avengers. Um mm-hmm. which is bizarre to like put yourself back in that place like when you must have watched it for the first time and gone like, oh shit. You know, uh that'd be nuts. Yeah. Like that's that's their post credits. That's the biggest thing at the time is the mm-hmm. Avengers. Five what is it or six? Am I I think or how many are there in the Avengers? Six. Iron Man, Cap, Thor, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, okay. So six. Okay. Yeah. Just six te- yeah. six people. That's the biggest thing of, of, of all time that at this time. It's crazy. Um and now we need forty eight different cameos and uh sixty four main cast stars uh to, to satisfy you know, most people. But um come a long no. way 
come a long <laughs> way to be sure. Um, nah, man, I'm a, I'm huge, huge on stories that are anti-fascist, anti-Nazi. And it's, it's something that, you know, I, I've, I've, I've always had this sort of thing where I've, I've, I've hated, I've hated Nazis. And I, I, I won't. Wow. I won't be ashamed. You won't make me ashamed to say it. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've always hated Nazis guys. Uh, but, uh, you know, in recent years, the more I've come to love, like the Indiana Jones movies and how, how big of an anti-fascist streak those, those films have, I see a lot, a lot of Raiders of the Lost Ark in this movie. And obviously I don't think it's as good as Raiders of the Lost Ark by any stretch of the imagination. But, uh, it, my, my feelings that those movies were connected were realized whenever I dug into Joe Johnston and saw that he was the art director on Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981. Uh, the director of this movie worked at, as part of the production design team on Raiders. And I was like, fuck yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm always happy when shit like that happens for me. Uh, my, my, my connections aren't completely unfounded, um, beyond the obvious, you know, fuck Nazi thing. Um, I, uh, I love this one. I'm very, I'm very happy with where I'm sitting. Uh, yeah. I mean, and realizing that on this watch, like we talked about how Thor had like a really good supporting cast, but like this this one is ridiculous. So strong. Like Tommy Lee Jones, like a small ass role for him, but like, it's awesome. Um, like I'm th- that Hugo Weaving as Red Skull, you know, like I, it was saying that like, it's not really his kind of film, but he was like, yeah, he was kind of just indif- indifferent to it. And he was like, kind of whatever to him, which is hilarious for a Hugo Weaving just to take a role like this. Uh, I mean, that's, what's funny too. Like, what do you mean? It's just kind of not your type of film. You were in the matrix, the Lord of the Rings yeah. and, for Vendetta, and now Captain America. That's where this isn't my type of film. Yeah, I don't um, know. Uh, let's see. He maybe was, he'd uh, get in trouble for red face. You know. Ah, there, you go. there you go. This is this is kind of the most out there, I guess, villain that he plays. Like Agent Smith is is still like it's just him, I guess, and sunglasses, and I guess V. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe that's where it gets him. Is he has to take a, take his face off and throw it, and he's a Nazi as well. Maybe yeah, he doesn't maybe. like that. Um, but no, like, I don't know. This, this supporting cast was, was awesome. And, uh, Haley Atwell is Peggy Carter. I mean, I, I don't know. I was, um, it, it, I, literally every time she would enter the room, like everyone's attention was on her. And I thought it was hilarious. Like, mm-hmm. like the whole bar, like everyone was singing, having a good time. She just walks into the room in the red dress. They stopped. Everyone stopped singing at the same time. Everyone just looks in her direction and is just in awe. Um, and I, I think that's just like they do that with her a lot. And it's it's a a very nice way to shoot just women in movies, uh, especially mm-hmm. whenever they are this attractive and like it, it is. It it warrants the. the it's attention. not the same as um, uh, Scarlett Johansson's appearance in Iron Man Two. You know, it doesn't feel yeah. like we're gawking at her. It feels mm-hmm. like, uh, it feels like there's a, a deep admirance for her mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, she does, she does deck a dude in the face, uh, right off rip, uh, for hitting on her. So, I mean, she's, she's very, very her own character right off, off the, off bat. And, and, uh, I don't know. Just, I, I, I ended up actually giving her the, the performance, uh, for the movie, and I was I was between her and Chris Evans. Like Chris Evans, I mean, he does a phenomenal job, and I don't want to take away from that. But I was just I was just really taken back by the supporting cast that was around him the whole time. That was like just like uh, just doing a great job, and she had to get to like emotional depths, uh, like especially like just on the call at the end, uh, like her uh, just slowly breaking down. Um, the one thing that's kind of weird, uh, which you, you hit me up about how. Um, Marjorie and War or Walter Frey uh, were in this. The actors uh, who play mm-hmm. them in Game of Thrones, and and I'm like, what the fuck? How could they show up in this? And then Walter Frey is some I don't know. Ba- he's protecting the freaking yeah, power keeper. Yeah, yeah, he's protecting the Tesseract, which is awesome. And then Marjorie is the dude who just kisses him for like being badass, you know. She's like thank you on behalf of every woman ever in the United States 
And then, so that's the only beef that Steve and Peggy ever have, which is mm-hmm. like, like he just never, I don't know. I guess it, he de- can't really explain it away or like, there's a little, whatever, do you but, recall in She Hulk whenever, uh, the post credit scene where Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner reveals that Chris Evans lost his virginity in 19 or Steve Rogers lost oh. his virginity in 1945 to a girl on a USO tour. I identified that woman in this movie. I know exactly which girl it was. Um, no way when he's signing autographs during his tour she like walks up and she's like hey and he like does a little double take and then like uh like right before he signs an autograph that is absolutely the woman he slept with no Um, way after his right this is after this is after his transition right of him becoming a big buff guy yes yes Uh, when he's on when he's on tour as captain america performing uh, every city and stuff uh amidst that amidst that tour you know, um, it, okay, that is very fair because um, one of my lines is uh, is him saying a guy is asking like you know what you're doing. He says, "Yeah, I've knocked eight out, eight off Hitler over two hundred times, or knocked him out two hundred times on tour for a year, basically." Yeah, so, so he he's been around and like when you're on tour for that long, you know he's he was waiting for the right partner, but like when you're, I mean, he's got to he's got to cave in at some point, oh, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. Just seeing so many hot women, they're all going to be after him because he's captain America. Yeah, you know, no, so like, like, at some point he's going to be like, you know what? I might never see the front lines. I might never see Peggy again. Yeah. Fuck it. Um, yeah. you know, um, so that's why, like, I, I also don't think, I think it's hilarious. There, there were like a, there were a big uproar about that scene during like when she Oak was coming out because everything, when she Hulk was mm. coming out was a big uproar to a certain sect of fans. Yeah. Um, and it was, uh, it was like Steve Rogers would never do that. And it's like, brother, it's not an unethical thing to find a woman attractive brother. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he had sex before Peggy Carter. I hate captain America now. And I, can't, yeah. now I, I cannot stand him because he, yeah, he didn't hold true for the right partner. That man, yeah. I, like, I love that character. Easy. <laughs> easy character nod in this one you know um i love chris evans as steve rogers and just the the heart of the character and how your i love an internal conflict for a character i always do it's 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 usually the best way to drive a character forward to create a movie where the character knows themselves so well already yeah. And to be so satisfied with the conflict of the story and its resolution on its own, how it's possible to do that so effectively is beyond me. Because if you look at the phase, if you look at phase one, Iron Man, Tony Stark, a self-realization, Thor, a self-realization, Incredible Hulk, a self-realization. Steve Rogers knows exactly who the fuck he is in this movie and does the entire goddamn time. And that's part of what is so awesome about the character. I, uh, I, I love, I love this guy. So it, it was an easy one to, you know, he hates bullies. I, I love, I loved that. Uh, I love that scene. Um, yeah. Sending a message to skinny kids everywhere. If you just get roided up, uh, you too can get five to six inches taller and instantly jacked. So I'm thinking mm-hmm. about starting steroids very soon after watching this. Uh, because seeing the reaction of Peggy Carter right when he steps out of there, I mean, she literally just almost touches him <laughs> on the on the chest, you know, like those. She's like actually taken back. She's like, "Holy shit!" Like, uh, like you. I, I, I wanted to ask, mm-hmm. like, is that like is Chris Evans like? It's a body on. double. It's not. Chris oh, Evans. it's not even him. Um, That's not even him. Bo- there? there are both body doubles. Uh, the body double when he's smaller, and then the body double when he's giant. Um, what? most of the movie, it is actually him, but that scene specifically is not actually him because of the exposure of his body. Like they wanted to emphasize just how fucking ridiculous his body got. Uh, so that's basically a bodybuilder that they have, uh, okay. that they have there. Um, arms were the size of tree trunks. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. That, I mean, he got fucking yoked. Um, that was and Chris awesome. Evans did get yoked, you know, yeah, like he he's still a big dude and ripped mm-hmm. as fuck. But there's a certain level of big that is not quite attainable 
uh, yes. for Chris yeah. Evans beyond, you know, st- like abusing steroids. Um, and I'm yeah. sure he had his share of roids. Uh, don't get me wrong, but regardless, uh, I, I, I think that of most, most MCU actors, uh, they, they have yeah. such a strict regimen for you that you, it seems impossible to not at some point try to boost that possibility for you a little bit. Um, Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, like, even when you do see him later, in like his uniforms and stuff, he's not that big. Yeah. You know, like he's a, he's a huge dude. Like he's, he's jacked, but he's not mm-hmm. that big. That's true. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just in the, in the normal t-shirt, he looks like he looks good just in, uh, like when he's running in Times Square, even like at mm-hmm. the end. This is the very end when he's running oh, out. Yeah. It's just like, damn. Like, or, or even when he, when he puts the shirt on and he's running, like, right after that, um, yeah, like right after yeah. he gets uh, his transformation and running in the streets, um, yeah. He's, yeah. He's I just, good. I just looked it up. His, he's 5'11", so around my height, but he's 215, oh. so, like, 50 oh. pounds heavier than I am. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. That'd be a big wow. yoked. Wow. Thing. That's a, that's a big fucking man. That's a big fucking man right there. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, at least I, and I, I, I've always read that that's a body double. I just think that there's a noticeable difference mm-hmm. from the side. Like that dude is as big as he is when he has clothes on, you know, yeah. like whenever you get the, when you get the armor on him, that's the size he is with his shirt off when he, when he, tra- when he turns yeah. there. Um, and that's one of my favorite scenes. And, uh, you know, I, I I love that whole sequence with Doctor Erskine and uh, uh, Peggy mm-hmm. right beforehand, and um, the the Nazi spy infiltrating and blowing it up and everything. Like it's such a there's just such a pulpy classicness to this sort of this this story that you get from a period piece. You know, like you don't the MCU mm-hmm. doesn't have any opportunity to do period pieces besides this. The closest thing they've done is like. 90s nostalgia with Captain Marvel, you know, and even that was a giant sci-fi epic. Yeah. Um Yeah. The Eternals nothing. plays with it a little bit, but that's a lot of different periods. You don't get to focus on anything and the production design of this movie specifically blew me the fuck away. There's a uh, there's something about like uh comparing it to the other Phase 1 movies where like Thor has ridiculous production design but you know the visual the, like i think that's the movie it finds itself most in common with um iron man i think is shot wonderfully but i don't think the production design is nearly to the level of this or, or thor or anything you know like that's that's the kind of balance you're looking at here and uh mm-hmm. i think the special effects in this are wonderful some of the best yeah. we've seen in phase 1 um they're good they're the only there's only only the shot that that gets me is Bucky falling. Um, yeah. But when he, whenever he's going down, like, it's just like it, it looks like literally, I don't know, someone just on a green screen and just clicked and dragged to make, make his, him smaller. I don't know. It just, it, yeah. and like dragging him down. Like I, I, I can't get it out of my head, but uh, like other than that, I mean, it was like this, I didn't know that it was this movie where, uh, you know, in I think it's end game whenever it's like uh, showing all the, the signature um, kind of shots for each character. Uh, and Tony is like him wailing away on the anvil, I think. Mm, and and yeah. this one, it, it, it comes in this movie, he's like, th- I don't know, the perfect, like, throw the shield right at the camera yeah, yeah. Uh, sideways. And uh, I, I don't know, I thought, I thought that was a really sick shot. Um, and then the other option I had in here, I think that's the one I'm going to go with, is his, his, uh, um, his signature. Um, but the other one I put in here was the, uh, whenever he does run out in, uh, New York City, whenever he wakes up and, uh, busts out of his, you know, old, old room or whatever that they had him in, and he's looking, looking at Times Square, and it kind of, the camera pans around him and shows, like, you know, he's like, what the fuck? He's like, where, or like, what is this? Like, can, Mm -hmm. imagining, like, what that would be like, like, he's, the last memory he has is like saying goodbye to Peggy and putting the ship down in ice, and he wakes up and he sees like the buildings aren't even close to the city. Like there's this a screen to him, 
you know, like there's screens on buildings and like the moving ads, you know, he's going to, he's like to that is already like, what the fuck? Uh, I don't know. That always just like gets me anytime that happens in a movie where someone can be like time shocked. Um, I'm instantly in. Uh, and so like, I just... like the transition of cars and how they looked, you know, in the forties compared to, you know, whatever year it was, he woke up, he probably thought they were like spaceships. Like what the hell are yeah. these? Oh man. Yeah. That's, that's a shock and a hat. I mean, that's like it, war. That's like, I don't know. He's been through war, but that's like a shock that you just can't, you, no one can prepare for 70 years. No. Yeah. That, I think that's what Nick Fury said. Yeah. Nick, he 70 was like, years. Yeah, 40, so. 42 or 40 something to 2012. Damn. And then they have, and pulled up on by like six different cars with Nick Fury walking out with the iPad. Like, what the hell do you think at that moment? Oh my God, his first. Oh wow, I forgot. Okay, this is kind of, kind of. No, I know what you're. I know. What yeah, you're like for the time, like for him, 70 years ago, you know black and white wasn't as comfortable as it is in 2012 so his first order to kind of be taken by nick fury is really hilarious you know he's really shocked into the times um i I don't know i think there was something i saw about it like a i don't know if it was a tweet or something like that no i mean uh, that's been a meme for years now uh, i mean he's interaction he's having with with nick fury uh you know i guess uh, there was there was a, a black guy on their on their crew, you know, on his crew that that, that like he kind of built his own crew. Yeah. Um, he was the one that kind of spoke French with that other guy that was like, oh yeah, we're in. Uh, whenever they they decide to go mm-hmm. back or whatever. Yeah, he's so, got a little. He's got a little yeah. bit of. He's got a little bit of everything on his team, you know. Yeah. He's got the Asian know. guy that the Irish guy goes up to and is like, "So we're <laughs> taking everybody." And he's like, "Brother, I'm from Fresno." Uh, like uh, that that shit killed me. Uh, that, was, yeah. that was a wonderful part of the movie. I'm um, pretty sure it's just he hates Nazis. That's kind of the only common denominator. Yeah. yeah, and if if you're not a bully or you're not a Nazi, it goodbye, goodbye, Cap. Um, you you you're all right. You know, Peggy. She, I mean, she's British. You know, and that's like the dream girl. You would think Captain America's dream girl would be America. You know, the 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 stereotypical American girl at the time. But no, no. we're going across the pond. We're going to the people who colonized us. Yeah, no, we're going to our enemy uh, for the girl. Um, no, it's going their tea and their bitches. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't blame them. I don't blame Steve one bit here. No, nah, Haley Atwell is a beautiful lady, you know, uh, potentially at her most beautiful most recently this year um, in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, uh, Mission Ooh. Impossible 7. Number seven. <laughs> Unbelievable. Man, I didn't know Unbelievable. The, definitely the movie of the year in terms of the most hot people. Um, okay. Huh. Just just well, a ridiculously attractive cast. And I really want to get to that movie, but I really would hate to just jump from one to seven. You know, no, and especially seven. seven. You gotta you gotta watch at least five and six. Um, probably even. F- yeah. And then if you want to get a lot of five, you gotta watch four. Um, might as well. You're gonna do all that. You might as well watch two and three. Also, I'm in that deep. Um, Come on, I I just gotta binge it out. I love I love the Mission Impossible movies, but uh, no, I uh, I I enjoyed Haley Atwell in this movie, and I think you going with her for your performance is Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's an interesting choice. There's a lot of there's a lot of good performances in this movie. Uh, Mike, where do where do you come down in terms of your favorite performance of the movie? Um, I'm going to go with Steve Rogers, Captain America himself, uh, pretty much basically what you touched on earlier, Colton, of just like, you know, he's just this, uh, he's this character. He knows who he is and doesn't matter before transition or after, uh, you know, whatever you want to call that injection, whatever. He is still the same guy. He didn't turn cocky at all. He didn't think he was some badass. You could just Mm -hmm. do whatever he wants, could go into any bar and take any girl or whatever. He's still... Um, lived up to what the good scientist said. I forgot what was, what was his name. Erskine. Erskine. Yeah, he told him. Um, I think like not moments, but uh, a few scenes before he told him to no matter what happens, you know, don't lose your compassion and your ideology of the ball true power. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't lose his compassion. He didn't take his power um, and abuse it. He just did what he thought was right to save people. And while maintaining like a good personality and not becoming cocky. Um, and I think he just nailed that. Chris Evans nailed that. Um, and he looks the part too. Handsome Mm -hmm. man. So, uh, that's, uh, that's who I'm giving my performance to. 
I dig that. No, you're absolutely right. There's there's such a fascinating thing about casting Chris Evans in this role where up to this point, um, he'd been typecast as a douchebag. Um yeah. he hadn't yeah. been the good guy. Um he'd never been the 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 good man. He'd always been like in Scott Pilgrim versus the world, a year earlier, he's one of the deadly the evil exes and he plays the movie star Lucas Lee, who's a complete fucking loser just an absolute douchebag you know uh not another teen movie he plays the jock douchebag you know like there's uh, fantastic, fantastic four, four. he yeah. plays the douchebag you know yeah. like that's that's been his thing up to this point so it was a big swing with him and him knocking it out of the park like this is a unexpected and now looking back it's like there are people who were like well duh of course there's nobody else who could have played steve rogers but like that wasn't the feeling at the time mm-hmm. and uh for him to live up to that is incredible. He did, he did a great job. Um, I yeah. love that pick. I'm actually going with someone who probably has some of the least screen time in the movie. I'm going with Stanley Tucci as Dr. Abraham Erskine. Um, I'm a huge fan of Stanley Tucci. I love Stanley Tucci. Um, most recently I watched him in, uh, the day trippers before this fantastic, f- fantastic film, fantastic performance. Um, there's there's not a lot that he can be in where he's not going to be good. Uh, uh, just an incredible performer. The Devil Wears Prada, incredible in that as well. But uh, mm-hmm. he's uh, was it was it that? he in the wasn't he in the the Lovely Bones too? Wasn't he like the creepy neighbor? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, he was. Yeah. Yes, he was. I was trying to call him. Yeah, obviously when I was rewatching this, I was trying to figure out what else he was in without looking it up. And that was the only thing that came to my mind was that face right there. Because I feel like he's mm-hmm. also in a popular things, but that was one thing that made me think of uh, was the Lovely Bones. Oh yes, and I mean he's a Caesar Flickerman in the Hunger Games movies. He's the guy who oh, brings yeah. them all out on stage yeah. and oh. uh, he's the propagandist. He's obviously done up in a lot of makeup there as well, <laughs> with the the heavy okay. tan and the hair and everything. Yeah. Uh, this is one of our bald kings. Actually, in all reality, um, okay. he was an easy A, just just an incredible, incredible performer, and uh, <laughs> I, I love the guy. So as soon as as soon as I was reminded, really, that he was in this movie, like when he popped up, I was like, Stanley fucking Tucci, baby, please stand up. I love, I love, I love that guy. So uh, yeah. I went with him, and it wasn't just because it's Stanley Tucci; he does a great job. You know, um, there's uh, I I. I'd personally never seen him play German, uh, and I feel like he pulls off that accent really, really soundly. Um, and I think that uh, there's it, he has a similar thing to do as Chris Evans in terms of the steadfastness and and the righteousness and what he believes in, and mm-hmm. to portray that cool confidence while also exhibiting this nervousness in the face of his achievement wonderful i thought he did i thought he did an incredible job at, at depicting that and uh I, I i absolutely adored him in this movie so i i went stanley tucci uh big yeah. big tucci guy here tucci yeah, I, head if you will i agree i agree and uh i think that was who i was also debating on performance wise because i think yeah all, although he didn't have a lot of screen time and he was kind of off t- pretty early in the movie um i think he nailed that role um and he also had my favorite line uh as well um, and I'm sure if I rewatched it, I'd probably have a few. I'd pick others just because there. I thought there was so many ones, um, especially like the last one of the last scenes in the movie where mm. uh, captains flying the ship into the ice. But um, I don't know. Whenever I, whenever we do these favorite lines, um, especially about these uh, superhero movies, I kind of look for something funnier because there's not a whole lot of comedy in the movie. I mean, they 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 touch base here and there. But it's definitely not like, hey, it's not. This isn't a comedy movie. Um, but it was, I think it was the night before, and he came up to Steve or, or Chris's bunk, or yeah, Steve, not Chris, either mm-hmm. one, same. Uh, came up to his bunk, and he was just kind of chit chatting him, and you know, trying to you know give him a good like pep talk, like hey, like this everything's gonna be fine. Um, pours uh Steve a drink, uh, then pours himself a drink. And uh, he's about to drink it, or uh, Steve was. He's like, "No, you can't drink. Uh, you have you have procedure tomorrow." 
uh, and then he's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, good idea. And then Steve does the same thing. He's like, wait, 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 you can't drink. He's like, no, I don't have a procedure tomorrow. I drink. I don't drink after. I drink it now. Yeah. And <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. I mean, he does a lot better accent than I do. Um, it's probably a lot funnier him saying it, but I was just, I was laughing my ass off during that scene. No, it's a great one. It's one of those more endearing moments as well that kind of emphasizes the uh, the bond and understanding that those two have um, going into this procedure and seeing how much it affects Steve as soon as you see him gunned down. You know, like this is the man who believed in him. He's the reason he's here. You know, there's if if, if not for Erskine, there's there's no chance that like they literally make that a point that like, anybody else would have gone with anybody else. It's not a uh, it's but it's not up to them. So I I was also tempted to go with Erskine for the character, but ultimately the guy who he's believing in is the guy you got to go with. I feel like uh, and t- if you're going to go with the good guy, you go with the with the good guy, you know, um, because this is the ultimate good guy. And uh, that's that's a great line choice. I did end up going more end of the movie with my line. In fact, the last line of the movie is the mm-hmm. one I went with uh, just because like, bro, I hadn't watched this movie in years. I forgot how deeply the ending of this affects me. And I, would I'm assuming I've almost certainly watched this since end game. I think I have, but thinking about it uh. in the context of his ending, his actual ending really, really gets you, man. Uh, it, it gets mm-hmm. me there. And Whenever he, whenever Sam Jackson, Nick Fury walks up to him at the end and he's like, you going to be okay? You know? And he's like, yeah, I just, uh, I had a date. I like, I just, I fell apart, bro. I was like, no, no. You know, like, uh, dude, that shit fucked me up. I loved it. And there were many little tear ups, you know, many like, uh, just heartwarming moments in, in this one. It was just, it was really nice to, to have like it, it's crazy how a story can get better, you know. At, now after seeing you know how it ends, we we know how it how story is completed. Now maybe he's on the moon. We don't know. There's still a rumor that's unconfirmed. You know, we we're not sure. Um, but no, I, I it's it's crazy how it is getting better over time. And yeah, that that end. Yeah, that's the line I went with was in their conversation. Whenever he said, I'm, I'm going to need a rain check on that dance. That's when I, when I was like, I was already like kind of tearing up or like welling up. And then he said that. And I was just like, Oh man, I'm like, yeah. everything came together at once. And I'm like in game, you know, seeing them dance, like in the little house together, you know? And then, and then like, I'm having that flicker back and forth with him literally dying in a couple seconds. So mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh shit, dude. No, God. yeah. Like the sacrifice. That's my favorite. That's yeah. my favorite scene is him putting mm-hmm. it down. Like, cause there are yeah. so many options. There are so many great scenes in this movie, and I wanted so badly not to go with the obvious one, but that scene is just so Damn, fucking dude, good. Dude. Whenever he takes so the good. plane back and has that conversation with Peggy, uh, bro, I'm I'm crying the whole fucking time. I really am, and I I didn't so far. The reason this I'm I'm. I'm officially there. The Avengers won't top this for me. This is my favorite phase one movie. I have, I have no doubt about that. Um, this is the only one that's gotten me there emotionally in a real sense. You know, like I felt it in, in a few other, like I, I like Thor a lot and I, I like Iron Man a lot, but they're not making me tear up. This one made me fucking cry and like actually cry. I'm not talking tear up. Like I, like when he's landing that fucking plane, I'm like, <laughs> You know, I got a little bit of that thing going on. And it's just the idea of a man so willing to give his life for the right thing. And I also have this little connection in my mind to, again, a much better movie critically, but uh, a movie called A Matter of Life and Death, which, Joe, we've talked about several times. The uh, the opening of that movie um, is a fighter pilot in World War II uh, whose plane is crashing. And he mm. gets on the radio and talks to a woman who he's never met before, but they like, it's like the first five minutes of the movie and they fall in love through, through talking at, as he's about to fall to his death. Like that's, and it's one of the most moving opening scenes of anything I've ever watched. But, um, whenever Peggy 
is like, like, don't worry, I'm here. Like, it'll be okay. It immediately took me there. Mm -hmm. Immediately took me there. And that made me all emotional and just like, and uh, Peggy actually looked like she was modeled a lot after that woman, which was interesting. Like, I I doubt that I severely doubt there was any actual inspiration taken Mm -hmm. from that moment. But the scenes parallel each other in a lot of, a lot of ways. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. So I, I went with him. Put, I'm gonna have to put her in the water, as he says. That's uh, that's the one that I I, that's the scene for me. I fucking love it, dude. Yeah, no, that's. I'm glad I, I saw that you did go with it because I, I mean I feel like it is kind of the the clear scene. But I I had two other two other highlights. I think um, I'm either going with whenever he does get his his serum upgrade uh, and he's you know it, the, the procedure uh, is actually going going and he you know he's screaming everyone's like oh no this is going wrong shut it down and then steve's like no i can take it and somehow doesn't scream from that point on i thought like you know it'd make more sense if he like kept screaming like through it but no he's just a tank he's tanking that shit um or he passed out i don't know probably um passed out now that i think about it um but no i i love the the you were talking about like the timepiece that they were in, like seeing the guy like set the little little silver container down. You know, yeah. I don't know what like it looked. I don't know what the fuck it was supposed to be, like a cigarette maybe holder or something yeah, at the time, yeah. maybe. And um, turns out to be an explosive. You know, and you, you have that whole thing going on. You have, um, you know, all the the classic just the the slow turn of a dial up to 100 you know yeah, like that yeah. howard stark is doing it's just like it, it was it was really cool uh cool to see in the time like the time period um of everything so i i, I really liked that um it was in between that and then uh steve Brake and bucky and all the rest of them out of that uh i guess just hydra camp um, yeah, prisoner camp yeah, just, yeah. prisoner camp um and and i don't know it was just you know, Steve, Steve just saying, I, I'm, I have to do this. You know, I, I don't care. And Peggy being like, all right, I'll, I'll help you out. Calling in Howard Stark again, you know, for the, for the private jet, I guess, uh, to take him, take him over so he can parachute in. Um, do you do? From, yeah, fondue. fondue. Yeah. From that point on, he thinks fondueing means sex, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, he can't get that out of his head. Um, and it takes it takes until Howard Stark tells him, "Yeah, nah, dude, it's just melted cheese. Like, uh, that's just uh, don't even try to understand a woman, man. Yeah, I want you if you, tr- you I don't, or whatever. You know, he goes on to say, and um, I don't know. I loved all the Howard Stark little cameos in here. Um, oh, one and- of the one of the more uh, I don't know, one of the best little MCU Easter eggs. It's not really an Easter egg. He's there for the whole movie, but like." Mm-hmm. Uh, them them popping up at the Stark Expo at the at the beginning, but like one of my yeah. favorite scenes at the end, another thing that just kind of moved me again was whenever he's he is spearheading the search for Steve Rogers. Not not yeah. the Tesseract. The Tesseract's like Yeah, cool. Glad we yeah. got it. But keep let's looking. keep looking keep for looking. him, yeah. you know? Um love uh, that shit. That that like that's that's incredible to me. And uh it really emphas like it really teases the relationship that as of now you you have not become familiar with if you're in 2011 yeah. of what Tony Stark and Steve Rogers dynamic could be potentially. Yeah. Um, I also love that the vibranium shield, all of the metal that they have in existence in their possession, is on the lower shelf, and he's like, ah. <laughs> Don't worry about this one. It's just a prototype. It's not even really that good. Oh, by the way, yeah, the metal is completely shock absorbed. There's no other metal that can do any of this. Uh, by the way, uh, you wouldn't want that one. Uh, I, I don't know. I love. I love how it's just on the bottom shelf, just below a bunch of other, like the 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 first shields that they were showing had like guns or something like built into them you yeah, know exactly. so like yeah. to think like what it could like what cap could have been instead of just a frisbee you know just wailing it around like a frisbee like that's i mean that's gotta hurt so bad like can like oh my god like i would i don't know would you rather get sliced by it or like hit i feel like getting hit by it and if it bounces off of you that'd probably be worse than just getting like sliced like 
I think I'd rather just go. In terms of you know? pain, yeah, because yeah. you probably don't feel much when it slices you. Yeah, um, like I feel like you're just paralyzed from like a foot, like just plus or minus half a foot from where the shield hits you. Like that, well, you're just done. Like that part of your body never moves again. Like, it's just <laughs> broken. Like everything is. That's funny because like I that. I've taken it. They've done a lot of stuff with the shield in the last couple years. With, uh, obviously the Falcon and the Winter Soldier where Sam Wilson learns to wield it. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, you had John Walker throwing, throwing that thing around. You had, uh, you, you know, in Multiverse of Madness, you watch Wanda slice Haley Atwell, Peggy Carter in half with it. Um, and it just, all those things have come to a point where it's made me appreciate the, uh, caution. That Steve Rogers uses. Mm. Yeah. Bro could throw this shield through anybody he wanted. Yeah. Like that's that's the level of strength we're talking about with the super soldier serum. He could throw it through people. Ah. And he doesn't. You know, and that's uh that is fair enough, because that is like what um is it Irk or Irk? Erskine. Erskine, yeah. Uh, That's what he tells him is like you you know you have the power, like you you know the power of strength, and when not to use it. Uh, th- that is why he is the perfect fit. Why he is the perfect soldier, and and no one else um, could do it. Yeah, that, I don't know. That I I do like that. Yeah, because because Red School, I mean, he has kind of like a dumbed down version, I guess. But but when he wants to like kill a dude, Red School just, I mean, if he doesn't shoot him, like. Dude, dude just sends him across the stratus. I mean, he just sends him. Uh, dude flies for for quite a way. So yeah, that, Steve, Steve could probably pretty easily just slice a person in half. Yeah, that's why I'm like every yeah. time like I watch him throw it off of somebody. I, like there are things he does that are like way more brutal than throwing a shield off somebody. Like whenever he like drop kicks a guy and he goes flying twenty feet back, I'm like. Holy fucking shit. You know, like, can you imagine, like, somebody just, like, oh, just kicking you? Like, oh it's not, like he runs God. into it, obviously. There's w- one of my favorite moments in this movie. One of my favorite punches. It's outstanding. It's when he's chasing the plane out of the hangar, and he's, like, on foot before Peggy and Tommy Lee Jones coming in. <laughs> and he's running past a dude and just knocks him the fuck out. Just knocks that <laughs> dude out. Random yeah. as shit. I absolutely love it. It mm-hmm. killed me, and yeah, I've like, never noticed like, it. In the new Batman, you know, I, well, I'm, I'm thinking like when he infiltrates the club and like this guy rounds yes. a corner, like the one two, the yeah. You know, Batman needs like one two, but like Cap, it was just, I mean, on the run, not even thinking about it. Dude, he was just stop. like boom, and that dude's jaw could have I mean, separated dude, this man's head from his body because he of that. might be dead. I mean, that dude actually <laughs> might be dead. We don't know. It was uh, in a flash. Um, but yeah, that's, that is crazy. Dude does have, have the strength. And that's, um, and that's why I ultimately go with him for my character, you know? Uh, yeah. My, Mike, what are you, uh, what are you feeling in terms of, give me your scene and your character. I don't know you've officially said your character, but we can, we can go with it for a while. Okay. Um, so I'll, I mean, I want to choose Cap because he's just, you know, he's that guy for many reasons of what we've talked about, but I got to give it to Red Skull as my favorite character. I absolutely love uh, this like mad scientist, evil scientist villain um, in this time era. Um, looks, looks scary as hell. You know, if I see that guy, I'm obviously going to turn around, not make eye contact. act like I didn't see anything. Just uh, head down. You're fine. Do whatever you need to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally like, I'm not going to try and cross paths with that dude. Um, but yeah, he's just a mad scientist who like creates this unique, powerful weapons. He started his like Hell Hell Hydra campaign, um, and I just think he's he looks cool, looks badass. Um, I love I love it I love it all. I just other than did he like did he die at the end? Was that him? No. Well, if you'll recall, in Infinity War and Endgame, he's the dude who resides over like the Soul Stone. He like uh he's the guy who like oh, yeah. floats up yeah. and you know like that's that's him. He got transported life. there. Yeah. Vormir okay. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Yeah, um, it is Vormir. 
It is. Thank you for bringing up Red Skull as the character because this is where the is where uh, the larger yeah, Loki like... and uh, Odin uh, things come into play. Like, uh, I don't know. Now. I think, I mean, hold on here. You know, like, obviously at the time they're not thinking this far ahead, but they could so easily use this, especially with the new you know changes that they're going to have to make they're going to have to make changes with the current state of the MCU um so uh th- that that red school he says you know he he seems crazy to everyone else and he's he's a lunatic but he says i i have like been spoken to by the gods you know like i've seen the future i know what i must do i i have to take like i'm walking the path of the gods blah 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 this could either be um Loki like leading uh Red Skull down the path to find the Tesseract for him for whenever he comes to Earth. Um, right. to get it all set up in the first place because I mean that's that's how Loki takes over Earth uh, is with the Tesseract. So like it could be it could be through time, you know, he realizes that in order to set all of that in motion it has to start somewhere. The Tesseract got on Earth. Um do we know how? It even showed up on Earth in the first place? It- no, I don't think our histories go back that far, MCU-wise. I think, canonically, this is the first and earliest appearance of... Yeah, it's just been protected. I guess it's been protected in this village, in the life tree, and right there by a snake as well. He pushes the snake's eye to get it out and and look at it. Um, Walter Frey being the one to not even look at it. You know, it's not meant for mortal eyes. Exactly. Uh, for the, the eyes of normal men. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it is kind of interesting, you know, with the, the life tree imagery, you know, if, if they do want to retroactively bring this into like a, a crazy, like mind blow that Loki has been slowly paving the way for him to become where he is right now mm. uh because it always had to happen that way sort of thing so you know i it, it's um even though we saw it happen like this at first and no way they're thinking of it in 2011 no, yeah yeah um, no, like, there's a lot i, I understand that. that but in in the new movie they could show like flashbacks of him being like oh yeah no i like i had to do this like i know it's bad to set red skull on this path but it had to happen in order for the the uh, tesseract to be found by howard stark and then howard Mm -hmm. stark would study it and create you know because that gives uh, a whole research that tony would then finish later on you know like uh it's given um i don't know that's to create a new element that research comes from him studying the tesseract for all these years Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so a lot of things have to happen in order for the yeah. sacred timeline or blah, 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 you know, um, in order for it to be this loop or, or whatever. So I don't know. I, I think it is pretty cool that even this early on, like uh, in Thor, I, I found some things that was like, oh, they, they could play on that as like him time slipping or him coming in to, to say what up and see his brother or something like that. or And maybe this is, is somehow Loki uh, setting up his plans or Odin's. This is his larger lesson for Loki the first time or something like that but um that is all i will say on <laughs> and Loki side I'm, of always, I, I'm a big fan i'm a big fan of the theory my uh i i guess the logic of the theory for me i always end up rationalizing it in a way that's like how would they tell that in a story and for me, ultimately, I think that what you're saying could absolutely be the case, but I think it would be implicit. I, like, uh, otherwise we get like this giant expository info dump that, I mean, and I'm not going to put it past the MCU. They've mm-hmm. done a lot of terrible shit. Um, yeah. I mean, I could see, um, the only way I see it happening is like they need Loki back for some reason and he can't be on his throne for any longer. Mm-hmm. He needs to come back and do something. And uh, he's trying to explain why his seat is so important, but someone else will tell him, but look at all the bad that is happening because of, you know, the path that you have to pay or the, the path that right. you're paid, right. all the bad that's happening because of it too, um, sort of thing. Even though you're trying to do the right thing, bad is still a thing. You yeah. can't do anything about it. Um, that's like kind of the only way I could see it happening. It'd have to no, be in yeah. flat and all that stuff. 
but no, I get you. I get you. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a fun theory. I like I like it a lot. And there's there's a lot of I mean the Valkyries and a lot of a lot mm-hmm. of Asgardian uh, homages and allusions yeah. that I think uh, could absolutely come come back in in a in a pull through of some sort. But uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I I appreciate the pick of Red Skull as a favorite character because he. He fills one of my favorite archetypes in this anti-fascist, anti, anti-Nazi media, which is that he finds himself up, he, he thinks himself above the Nazis, which is something that, like, I, I've talked about this with Indiana Jones as well. All those villains are like using the Nazis as a means to an end. They're like, their power will help me accumulate my power and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And it's like, but you're willing to work with Nazis, even if you're not a, even if you don't think of yourself as a Nazi, like you're a Nazi, bro. Uh, and that's one of those things that makes villains like this compelling is that, uh, mm-hmm. they've somehow ration, like, and there's not even like a rationalization with this guy. He is hateful. His plan is to destroy the world, essentially. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. It's it's a wonderful one of those MCU villains that I'm surprised is not mentioned more in the in the best MCU villains category. Like this is this is an incredible character and an incredible and I love oh, I appreciate a nuanced villain. Of course, love a one dimensional villain, love a dude who's just like, I'm gonna fuck shit up because I want to, you know, it's Uh, awesome. The the serum brings out it it just heightens everything about you. So it brought Mm -hmm. out. All the, he was already a Nazi and already in on, on destroying the world. Like already hit, basically you give Hitler the super serum and it's super Hitler. I mean, this is, Red School is basically super Hitler. Um, and, hmm? Without the mustache, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, no hair. No hair possible for, for this guy. Had to, had to cut it off. Did he have a mask made? Is that like actually just like, a mask I'm that going he had. a prosthetic mask. Um, yeah. Like a really advanced prosthetic mask. Okay. Like, when did this happen? Uh, during his, like, serum transformation, you think? And he was like, oh, I have yeah. to wear a mask now. Because he yeah. always kind of pushed it up and stuff. So it, it was clear that it was on for It happened early before point. this movie, for yeah. sure. Like, uh. Okay. That, that's, uh, that's for sure. I don't think there's some, like, there's not an event in this movie that causes okay. that. He's always like that, and it just slowly reveals itself, which is very yeah. satisfying. I love that scene as well. Whenever mm. Steve punches him, and it like yeah. starts to go, oh. and you're like, you're like, yeah, you're like, ah, what is the that? Fuck like, is this dude about? You know, like, uh, you know, I I love that shit. It's uh, it's really impressive prosthetic makeup work as well. Um, it's it's incredible stuff that they managed to do with that character. Wow. So, yeah, to think that he's wearing a mask of his face over the red skull on his own face it's like a right, three it's right it's like he literally has his face the red skull and then his face uh it's <laughs> like a oh, hugo weaving red skull oreo um of sorts <laughs> uh wow that's the first i don't know if it's done like that i guess probably not he probably i'm assuming the, the process of it skull. coming off is visual effects for the most part um yeah, he does rip off a last little bit uh, on the back of his skull. I thought it was kind of hilarious. He he takes like it off in a really big piece, and then you could see him pull off this last little like little bit of skin and yeah, then like throw it down. There, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that was that was just kind of had a little ponytail back there. He had to. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Pop off. Like with it, like it That's cool. the only yeah. Hitler stash exactly. he could. Yeah, that was his Hitler stash hair <laughs> that he grew to to yeah. put it on. He was <laughs> growing it to put it on uh, during this reveal, but. Oh man! Yeah, the scene that uh, the one that was my favorite scene, the revealing of Red Skull, uh, where you know it's like the the classic mm. we'll trade the dealer, find the supplier, uh, classic video game mission where you you know you invade this uh, you know this uh, this campground or this building and you, mm-hmm. you NPCs leading your way up to this powerful boss um, that you're probably not going to beat for the first time because it's your first meeting. You're going to see him later on when he's more powerful and you're more powerful. Um, and then the the background of the whole facility, just going up in flames, blowing up um, as they're on like the high rise, you know, it's just like, mm. I think final four people 
in the building that are still alive because everyone's burning to death. Um, and then, yeah, like you mentioned before, the punch, they're, they're, they're exchanging blows and you can kind of slowly see his transformation. And then he just like, fuck it. He probably can't see anyway. So he just rips off his mask and reveals his badass, uh, true identity. Um, and that, so that was mm-hmm. my favorite scene of the movie. Mm. All right. Yeah, that's a I love, great too. Love how he just dips out on a rocket, like a, a helicopter rocket. Um, you know, they, they had some, some interesting, uh technologies you hydra know, that, was definitely they, creating shit um, they were getting they were getting weird yeah. over there and it, it um, had it had a thought that occurred to me that like during world war ii um like there was probably a lot of times where the americans like captured some nazi technology and was like oh damn like this is like some some wild shit and like i like it, it had like it had to be a weird feeling to be like man like these people are just so good at killing that like their technology is like just better i don't i don't know like it 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 was a weird thought like in the middle of the movie because like whenever cap comes back with bucky and all the prisoners and everybody they have like those huge tanks and the new guns and like they had to have been like holy fuck we could like take out everything like with just this little bit their little d-day or it's called Mm. like v-day yeah um where they storm the Hydra compound and watching like Hydra soldiers mow down American soldiers where they just like evaporate, like they don't exist anymore. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, Space like, gun. it's kind of, kind of cool. Cause like, yeah, is it, is it killing them or is it just teleporting them somewhere random in space? Right, it is the space stone. It is the teleportation. Yeah. Stone. I mean, they're harnessing the energy from it and then shooting the energy at them. So like, it feels like, like it's like evaporating them. Yeah. They're just kind of gone. Uh, but it would be really funny. Just, it's a random one point day. In they space reveal and, there's just, just like a bunch of yeah, American just, soldiers somewhere. Yeah. Just, but it's up. like, out in space though so like they just instantly suffocate in space probably you know that's that's my thought is that they're just like somewhere in deep space that that's their last memory is on the battlefield and then just and then just like instantly put you know uh yeah in the vacuum of space but Marvel guardians of the galaxy volume two on that ass there Mm -hmm. Um, it happens a little bit quicker in reality uh the front if you're facing a star, the front of your body will begin to boil, and then your back uh, will freeze uh, simultaneously, and that's how you uh, combust. You you kind of just explode because it's a very very hot meeting a very very cold at once. Um, and yeah, you that's just how couple, babies are made. Yeah, um, that okay. is how it is done in space. Uh, asexually, <laughs> the only way we can do it. A uh, few have survived um, the trip. But Damn, cool I, was, guys, baby. I was about to mention yeah. that like the best way to go out is just being like poof you're gone like probably painless you know you just mm. don't even gone but then you guys went a little deeper into that and made it sound like fucking hell so yeah, that no, sounds, I, the way that joe means, puts it it sounds fucking awful <laughs> yeah, that sounds, yeah that sounds space terrible isn't, yeah um, space isn't very friendly to our bodies but it would be pretty quick because you're you wouldn't have any time to suffocate because your lungs just instantly implode. So uh, there's no – it's very instant. You would not feel a thing. Uh, that good. that would ha- just happen to your body. Take afterwards. comfort in that idea. Yeah, you know? Just take comfort uh, in knowing you never had a choice. There's look nothing you, you could do. Look at you, um, look at you but, go. At least you yeah, got to live in space before you went. You know? Like you saw the, the star for a half a second. Yeah. Like, whoa, space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for uh, you know, uh, it, it's most uh, people it, can't say that. You know, most people no, have yeah, not I mean, been I've to space. Never been in space. You know, no. just, just raw dogging it, the yeah. whole <laughs> body out. Um, yeah, going trying commando, to, trying to swim yeah. against no current. You know, there's <laughs> nothing there. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no, man, I, uh, I, I, I came away from this movie. I went in expecting I would like it. I didn't think I was going to have like a new one of my favorite movies in the MCU. Yeah. Um, I fucking loved this movie, man, and I, I I can't I can't overstate that enough. But uh, what else do we have left? Is it shot? Is shot left? Is that the only thing we've got for the four, for all three of us? I think that's so. it. Mm-hmm. All right, then we'll start with Mike here. What was your favorite shot of the film? 
All right, this one was like super hard because they had so many action shots. They even had like a lot of scenes where they slow mode it as he was escaping some explosion or evading something, and it was like it made it super hard because I found my my favorite shot earlier in the movie, and I wrote it down like pretty early. I'm like, this has this is probably going to be it, and I kept watching. I'm like, dang, that's badass. Dang, that's badass. Dang, that's even cooler. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna stick with my original gut. Um, and it's, uh, skinny, skinny Steve, um, fighting against that bully, getting his butt kicked, and he, uh, he pulls out the trash can lid to, to defend himself. One, I just find it hilarious, um, cause it failed tremendously. He had it for two seconds and then just got no. ripped away. Didn't yeah, it, he, yeah, didn't give him any use at all. Uh, but then it also symbolizes like the first time it symbolizes like who he becomes later on. That's his first showing of like, Hey, yeah, this is just a stupid trash can lid, but it also shows like what's to come. If one might call that foreshadowing per mm-hmm. se. Oh, one so could. Like, wow. yeah. yeah. I mean, that is why That's he why grabs I'm- the garbage can on the bottom shelf, the vibranium shield, you know, in, in Stark laboratory. That's why he, that's why yeah. he's gravitated towards it. Uh, yeah, so humble. it looks ever yeah, the looks, humble man. Yeah, it looks like garbage, but happens to be the most valuable thing in the room by far. There is nothing in that room that is actually even close to it. I like valuable. to think that that's why that? Howard was like, "No, nah, you don't want that one." Yeah, he's no. like, "I actually really want that medal." Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's just a uh, very yeah. I don't want you to have it. Actually, that would be really. That's okay. We are taking it. Oh wow, uh, my vibranium's okay. gone. Oh shit. Um, don't know how the fuck they got that. Um, I guess there were just like artifacts that were around the world, you know, kind of in museums that were by Brandon. So I, you know, it's gotten out. Um, but how the fuck they worked with it and made it a shield beats me. I'd be uh, willing Howard, to bet they got it as a shield. They oh, it's just that, how it came. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. This is, yeah. This That's is fair. Illusion a Viking ship somewhere mm-hmm. in the something or washed up on shore like hmm this seems like this could be useful no hmm. wonder why so powerful and have raped all these uh you know wives and kids i could i could surf i could surf some waves on this bad boy <laughs> um look at me look at me go uh but uh yeah no the whole vibranium stuff is obviously the 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 plans for what they were going to do with wakanda changed a lot over the course of hmm. the I, i'd be willing to bet that they're latching onto this. Like he, he casually mentions it's vibranium. You know, he doesn't say it's rare. He doesn't say it's anything. There's a chance that they didn't originally conceptualize know. it. He did say it is the most valuable or metal on planet Earth, and that is all that we have. That is all we of the vibranium. All we have. Yeah. Um. Whenever, because that's that's why I was like so shocked as to why it was on the bottom shelf. He knows that this is the most valuable metal on planet Earth, and that that's all that they have. Hmm. Um, but apparently, he just got it from Wakanda uh, per AOU. What is AOU? Uh, Age of Ultron. Maybe. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um. I believe Howard said he was friends or called in a favor from the Wakandan king. Um, Would have hmm. been uh, probably T'Challa's grandpa. Yeah, um, I guess. Uh, yep, right. It's a uh, Age of Ultron. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, Wakanda. I think that's the first time Wakanda gets mentioned on screen is in Age of Ultron, hmm. um, mm-hmm. the year before Civil War, when they introduced T'Challa and T'Chaka and. You know, mm-hmm. Wakanda as a nation for real. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a, uh, I, I think that, cause there, here's another thing is that if you want to get into the nitty gritty of the continuity here, um, the version of the shield that we see in Iron Man. Yeah, wait, what's that? Yeah, that's, could, yeah. Could, you know, like that's, that's, the, that's where I'm like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter what the continuity is. Like, it's just, a, it's, that's actually the prototype. Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Um, that's why I'm like, if, if it's to be believed that they're both vibranium, they didn't just paint the one they had 
then it wasn't all the vibranium they had. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's, mm. that's where I'm at. But regardless, uh, it is what it is. It's, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. My well, favorite continuity does. Every little detail matters in the MCU. <laughs> they, if it they falls apart, I do. They need um, everything to be perfect. Um, I uh my favorite shot of the movie I I'm a sucker for the like first use of the shield like when they burst in there and he's holding it up and he's got the gun going and his boys are lining mm -hmm. up behind him love that shit um mm -hmm. but then like during that montage there's just like that's when he like chucks the shield at the screen that's when he does all the stuff mm -hmm. um there's a moment whenever he drops like a bomb into that just ridiculously huge massive tank um and jumps off the top of it and it explodes i mean like, that tank was like i don't even know ball. i don't even know what Stories. to equate it to yeah what do you equate the size of that tank that to? was a moving building that was like a sand like, crawler from like star the, wars the college <laughs> basketball experience might be the closest building that I just know that I could maybe, you know, like the, not the T-Mobile Sprint Center, but like just no, the actual, part of the building. just that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, like it's like, I, like I said, the sand crawler from Star Wars, but tactical, you know, it's not just, uh, it's not just roaming. That shit is firing stuff. Uh, but him jumping off the top of it and like, doing the slow-mo like I, i'm not usually one to go with like the the giant epic action shot but that was just too giant epic an action shot for me not to go with um i fucking love that um yeah that's i don't know i i i remember it is where my shot comes from the signature cap shield throw but before that i i i did have the like remember having the thought of like wait what the i don't remember that tank in this movie. Like, I don't remember Hydra having that sort of That's level of, of technology. Yeah, no, that was, it was a, a Zamboni. I don't know. It, no, I mean, a Zamboni doesn't even come close. Like, I mean, tanks are actually probably bigger than Zambonis already. So, oh, yeah. 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 Um, but no, this one was, yeah, uh, that was, that was sick. Very hyper, hyper, uh, like a crazy world whenever he went over in Germany. Like it was crazy how different it was. Um, but I, I liked it. I think it, it worked. It worked for the movie. Uh, no, it absolutely did. It absolutely did. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, think with that, we might be able to get into a little bit of a rating for this bad boy. Michael, you'll be delighted to hear that we only, we, we've changed the rating system mm. it's now just two things we don't have all the shit in the middle it's now just enjoyment and critical since okay. you last joined us which makes it a lot easier a lot neater i like it a lot more this way neato burrito it is um but before we get there joe how about you tell me where this landed on your comic book movie uh ranking as far as what yeah. we've covered in this project to this point so i mean i'm knowing i knew this was top 10 pretty easily uh because uh thor for me landed at nine or i think it was at eight before this um and i was like i'm i'm having a better overall time than thor thor might have more rewatchability to it uh, and, and more of like just a fun um entertaining time but this like cap gets me to cry uh, mm -hmm. like actually quite often um and the whole really realization of, of of his whole story i mean it it was a newfound kind of respect and, and love for the movie. Um, and right now it's, it's up, it's up there with Iron Man and up there with Iron Man for me is, is quite high praise. I had Iron Man at five. I can't put it above, but I'm putting it like right on the same level. Like, I mean, it's right there. Like it's kind of five a and five B. Gotcha. Um, so you've me. got it. At six. So, yes. Yeah. That is, it is where it landed for me. Um, mm. Landed at three. Okay. Got Whoa. Top three. Dark Knight um, and Superman, the only, only ones up there? Only ones. Uh, I feel like this this launched itself into an echelon for me on this viewing where, like, I texted you guys, like, it doesn't really feel like it belongs in a conversation with Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk in terms of the origin stories. It feels like it belongs in a conversation with Spider-Man 2002 and Superman 78 sort of stuff. Like, that's that feels more the vein this one fits in. Um, and I... I it elevated it like crazy for me. So um, I'm feeling good about it. But Mike, on a scale of one to 10, how much are you enjoying this bad boy? Oh, I enjoyed it. 
quite a lot. I gave this a 9.5 out of 10. Love that. Um, yeah, like you said, just a really good origin story. Um, throw in some World War II history in there. Um, and like Joe mentioned previously, the casting um, is very good. There's a lot of you know smaller roles, but but casted by a lot of well-known actors and actresses. Um, the only thing that I think that would have improved my 9.5 to a 10 is if they took a little bit more time showing uh, Steve's training after his uh, injection. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of like uh, if they would have done it like uh, Christian Bale in the Batman movies where he was training with like Liam Neeson and like learning how to do all these fighting and these action moves and using like how to wield his uh, shield, I think that would have get like probably like a 10 out of 10 for me. That's the only thing that I could like think of that is taken away from a perfect score of a 10 for me. I'm with you. This definitely could have benefited from a Rocky style training montage. Yes. Um, You know, just, uh, and you know, we get like a, we get that montage of him basically destroying Hydra uh, throughout Mm -hmm. Germany with his boys. But you know, him getting there. I would have liked that. I would have liked that. Um, yeah. nine five is a, just in comparison to our other ratings, a tad bit high for me. Um, now that my gut good, takes man. me, my gut takes me to point two five below that. However, I know Joe here said he can't put it above Iron Man, which is at a nine. Um, mm, you know, that's the, the, uh, the reason I can't put it above Iron Man, like Iron Man for me is I have a lot more relation with Iron Man than I do Cap. Uh, as far as the movie goes itself though, like I'm crying, like I don't really, I, I tear up a little bit in the first Iron Man, but nothing like this, like nothing like, like this movie. So I can, I could actually get by putting the enjoyment rating above, um, Iron Man, no problem for me. I was, I was literally thinking, I am on the same level as first class, if not nine five. Like I, I, I did put it above first class in my my I, ranking I did as well. Too. First class um, falls at four now. So, for me. so I mean, I was I was actually kind of debating a nine five. I was like, this it. I mean, it it sure as shit might be like it. It has all the classic superhero movie tropes that you like to see. The I mean, the guy couldn't be a better dude, and that's the whole point is that he is just that dude. Um, mm-hmm. with a good heart, and that is why he's Captain America. He does badass shit, killing Nazis. Um, Peggy, you know, he gets the doesn't really get the girl, but you know, he, he gets the girl uh, in spirit. Gets, yeah, we know we know how it ends. Um, he so it, yeah. Um, I I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of there. I'm 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 either at nine five or nine two five. Um, all right. Me. Hey, that's better than I thought I was gonna get out of you. So. If you want to take your pick there, I'm cool with either of those. Um, I mean, tying Superman is pretty high praise, but I'm, I honestly kind of think we're there. I mean, this, you're right, as in this is a phase one movie that is kind of in a league of its own. It is, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it was incredible. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, now that I'm, you say I'm, we've got Superman at a 9.5, I'm confident it's a 9.25. Okay. That's me. Yeah. That's me personally. Yeah, um, I mean, that is X Men First Class, which is also a, a phenomenal movie. Like, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, um, as far as my top four right now, I've got The Dark Knight, Superman, First Avenger, First Class. I would go one, two as a grouping, three, four as a grouping more for me there. Um, okay. and the, I feel yeah, like it finds its home there at nine, two, five. I think I like that. Um, cause Superman does have a little, a little bit extra. That, too. that one is more my, for you, what the Iron Man thing was, that's more what the Superman mm-hmm. thing is for me. I'm like, uh, well, you know, if we're talking about comparing a superhero movie to Superman, it's got to be fucking perfect. Mm. Um, yeah. And uh, th- this movie isn't quite perfect. I enjoy it a great deal, but uh, it's 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 not quite that for me. Um, okay. But are, are we settling at a 925 then? Yeah, I'm all right with that. All, good. all right. Then critically, on a scale of 1 to 10, just how well was this done, all things considered, the performances, the uh, the cinematography, the action of it, all of it? How are, how are you feeling about it, Mike? I'm feeling really good about it. I want to give it – I'm debating between a 7.75 and an 8. I don't know if it's quite at an 8 for me um, just because it's an action movie. It's pretty fast-paced. Obviously, they're not capable of showing all the smaller and finer details in a two-hour movie. You know, they're kind of limited 
to a time constraint. Um, you know, if they were able to shred it out a little bit more and show some of those finer details amongst mm-hmm. all the characters that they had, probably would get a higher rating for me. But I mean, great cast, uh, great shots, great action, uh, great performances by you know the main characters. Um, so I, I don't want to give it an eight, so I'll probably give it a seven point seven five. All right, all right. I'm uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. We're in a we're in a very similar s- spot as of yet. Those were the numbers that I was debating between as well. Um, all things considered, with the way that we weigh our movies and everything, your rating would come to an eighty three percent. Uh, an 8.3 out of 10, which feels about where I want to come down at. Uh, ultimately, I, I feel I feel very good about that. That sort of uh, that range right there. Um, how how are you feeling about it, Joe? Critically, I, I think, think that uh, there's a lot to like here. Yeah, I mean, an eight is X Men First Class. Um, so that's and you know V for Vendetta X Two. Those are our eights. So I don't know if I can really say it's as well made. The story is 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 as good as any of them. I, I'd say yeah. like this is this story is is phenomenal. The character work is great. Um, you know that's it's, it, where this movie excels. Mm-hmm. You know I think that in terms of its story and its character work, and then in its production design, the production design elevates the cinematography like crazy. The cinematographer does not have to work very hard to capture these mm-hmm. settings in a beautiful light like the sets are fucking magnificent um in fact whenever you can tell it's a green screen background is when the movie looks looks its worst you know um and Mm -hmm. so and i think that's just further proof that with that actual environment it, it didn't have to do as much heavy lifting in terms of camera work and i thought it was fine uh it wasn't quite with lesser production design, this becomes a bland looking movie. Um, and I don't think it is. And it's because of the life brought to that set. Um, but the performances are great. Chris Evans is amazing. Haley Atwell is great. Uh, Hugo Weaving, phenomenal. Stanley Tucci, Tommy Lee Jones, Mm -hmm. wonderful cast, just an absurdly good cast. Um, so, you know, eight, is probably my ceiling, you know, like uh, in, in terms of first class X2, you said Viva Vendetta, mm-hmm. probably yeah. 775 then as well. I'm probably right there with Mike. Um, Spider-Man 2 um, is where a 775 is. Went yeah, and it would it would be right above X-Men um, and Iron Man, X-Men and Iron Man out of 75. And I do think this is this is better made than Iron Man. Um, I would say it's a cut above. I'm yeah. there. So, I mean, I'm agreeing that the enjoyment and critical value is higher than Iron Man, but on my personal list, I still have Iron Man above it. I think yeah, I'm, I'm holding that's on. That's why the personal list is important. Um, you know, there's, yeah. there's distinctions to be made that you can't really quantify it yeah. when it comes to that sort of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, like, you're like, on paper, yes, makes sense that I would have First Avenger over Iron Man, but I just don't. And those, mm-hmm. that's what film does, man. Sometimes you just can't explain what happens. You're just like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. It's just the time, you know, yeah. I, I have so much more time with Tony, um, and, and love for that character. And I don't know, maybe this is the start of my cap. I don't think I'll ever be team cap. I don't know if I, I think all of civil war can really just be solved by a simple conversation. If they just fucking sat down for a few minutes. Um, but you know, my, take all that aside. I mean, I mean, there are some, there are some real beefs to be had. Um, but I mean, like I already thought of winter soldier as the best captain America movie. mm -hmm. And I'm sure it still is, which is why I'm excited to get to like, I'm more excited than I've been in a while about watching the captain America trilogy. Um, which previously I have not felt that way. I've always felt like it's, Probably my number two in terms of MCU trilogies, you know, Guardians one, easy. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, I I think that after this, Dude. if if the first two are Winter Soldier and this, that's and a then, strong two additions. Yeah. You know, uh, and then you I still have Civil some War. iffy feelings about Civil War, but we'll see about it. Yeah. Um, that's a crazy Captain America movie, but. 
Uh, it's basically Avengers yeah. three point five or two point five. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's. Uh. You know, a lot happens in that movie for it just to be a Captain America movie. But, um. No. Yeah. This. This was a very very g- great eye opening watch for me, and I will be very intrigued by the next. Uh. Next one to come up. Yeah, I I agree. I was yeah, like I said before, I had no intentions on watching this movie. And now that I rewatch this one, I feel like I need to revisit the other two as well. Um, mm-hmm. I might enjoy them substantially more like I did with this one. And I'm very excited to get to that. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Shaking, shaking that all out. Uh, our score that's came looking, out. That's looking it. like it's only going to be um, probably a month and a half away. Yeah. It's only like it, these are not very spaced out because I think that's 2013, maybe 2014. It is um, February 9th that the episode will be coming out for Winter Soldier. Oh, um, damn. A month. A month and a week. Um, so. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Man, that two a week thing is going to fucking We're making rock. them fly now. We yeah. are going to just burn yeah. through these motherfuckers a making little bit. Making them fly. Um, oh, yeah. I like I like where it's that. sitting, though. Shaking out to an 825 overall for us. Um, ooh, yeah, eighty three percent for the both of us. I do, um, and that that ties it with X two and V for Vendetta, uh, and I I really like that. Uh, I, I like too. that not not quite first class, but above the Watchmen, Spider Man two, Iron Man, and I yeah. I do agree with all of those. I would say that uh, that's the that's the spot for it to fall. Um, I'm comfortable with that. You know, I'm uh I'm happy with that. I can I can live with that. Um, yeah. Yeah, certainly didn't think I was getting another top five comic book movie so far. Anyway, you know, it's yeah. going to be crazy whenever we get to a point where we're modern and like this. It's at three right now, and it'll probably end up being like 10, you know, top 15. That's maybe. true. Yeah, because we still have um, the Guardians to get to. We still got all three uh, of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies with, shit. which, sorry. I like those more than this. Yep. Um, the Batman, Spider Man into the Spider Verse, Black Panther, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Um, shit, maybe the Winter Soldier. Uh, you know, lie. like uh, may- maybe Eternals. another Captain America movie, uh, Infinity War. Um, just like all sorts of shit that could yeah. could surpass this, which is Morbius. Insane. Um, of course, <laughs> yeah. you never know. You never know what could happen upon a rewatch of Morbius version of yeah. Suicide Squad. <laughs> Yes, um, and and who who can maybe forget? I reevaluate Catwoman, and it just shoots up my list. You know, yeah. I mean, we saw Big Hero Six to look forward to. Uh, that's the that one might that's genuinely kind of the... be above this. That, I think that might I, I don't know. Be there. Yeah, that's the most wild card kind of movie. I think that's kind of on here, but like, I think it's. I, I've never seen it, so I'm I'm really excited. Oh, you've never like... watched Big Hero Six? <laughs> no, I just know the memes about the really hot mom. And, uh, well, I think it's, they, she doesn't even wear that shirt. Yeah, actually, it's just like, um, I wish, you know. But yeah, no. that's the only, that's the only thing I know from the movie. And then what he looks, what, I, I is it, is his name Big Hero, or is it Six? What's the no, big white uh, tubby Michelin man looking, you know, what's his <laughs> name? What's his, uh, I don't know. Um, that's, that's, that's my boy Baymax. Uh, Baymax, Baymax, that sounds familiar. Uh, so yeah, that's how little I know. Um, about Big Hero Six. Oh shit, man! I um, I think you're gonna have one of your new favorite uh Pixar movies. Um, okay, if I had to guess. Yeah. I think it's a Pixar. It might just be Disney animated. Uh, mm. regardless. Um, yeah, that's that's a weird one to include here because it's <laughs> there were no Big Hero Six comics prior to this movie, but like this was created in collaboration with Disney. By Marvel for mm. this movie, so it's it's a weird comic book movie. Um, in that it these characters and this this idea had not yeah. existed prior to uh to the movie, but uh, yeah, it'll be a, it'll be an interesting one. It's been one that mm-hmm. uh, I've been debating on whether or not we should we should keep it or not. But uh, yeah, the only reason I was bringing it up because that's just right before the Winter Soldier. Uh, yeah, it's Big Hero before. Six right into the Winter Soldier. Um, if we do decide so, uh, to, but. to give you another perspective too, I worked in a, I worked for a steel mill, uh, company this past summer and that movie was mentioned quite a few times. If that says anything 
about its wide range of audience. Uh, wow. Enjoy. Big Hero 6 really appeals to the steel mill. Uh, yeah. Fella. Um, <laughs> okay. Interesting. I'll, I'll keep that lens in mind. Uh, whenever we get there, I'll watch it as a steel mill worker and see if I like it more. I mean, like it has a hardcore engineering angle, which makes me think you'll really appreciate it. Uh, like uh, it's a okay, it's that could be cool. It's re- like it's a gen- like it will probably be more well received than First Avenger here, if I have to guess. Like I love that movie, but uh, okay. Uh, regardless, uh, we will conclude this episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. If you would. Head to patreon.com slash pennybloompod where you'll find over 50 hours of exclusive content, all sorts of book reviews, comic book reviews, movie reviews, and the like. For $3 a month, you can support this podcast financially, which is huge because it costs me money and I don't make any off of it unless it's over there. Head to Twitter, follow at pennybloompod, follow on Letterboxd at pennybloompod, follow on Instagram at pennybloompodcast, and remember to leave a five-star rate and review wherever you might be listening. Continue downloading. We've got a new year. A new year has begun. We are yet to hardcore set a goal for what we want 2024 to be. I think my main goal is that I just want it to be as good as last year. I have a tough time believing we can do much better. I hope we can. I want us to. But last year was just absurd in terms of comparing it to the years prior. Um, And uh, I'm I'm very happy with that. And I'd be very happy with that performance once again. So please download. Uh, means means the world um continue to tune in you know this friday you know maybe we have another one that breaches the top three you know for me uh we've got ghost rider the spirit of vengeance uh the second nick cage ghost rider movie um yes well, which of course you know if you if you think about good comic book movies you think about ghost rider 2 um mm-hmm feels like the natural next step you go good comic book movies ghost rider too you know like that's that's the connection it's got a 19 percent on rotten tomatoes i mean it's uh, and, better than some you know uh, yeah yeah <laughs> uh we got mephisto syrian hines i uh, got good old mance Ryder. yeah uh, hines baby we Garen. get a, we get a lot of game of thrones crossover this week speaking yeah. of uh just th- at january 1st last monday we started uh, we we started the year off strong with the Battle of the Bastards. That was mm-hmm. the episode we covered on Monday, and then next Monday is the Winds of Winter, the season six finale in which uh, Cersei chooses violence. We'll put it that way. If you haven't watched the show, if you have watched the show, you'll really like it. Um, you should definitely check that out. Um, and we will be continuing um this comic book journey well into this year. Would be awesome if we could finish it by the end of 2024. Don't think that's going to happen, but it's a possibility. Um, mm-hmm. uh, mathematically, I think that at some point I'm going to have to s- switch gears. I'm going to have to turn it off for a little bit, but that we'll we'll get there when we get there. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, Friday Ghost Rider two next week, I believe, is the Avengers. Um, we're already there. There's not, there's not a, a huge gap between first Avenger and the Avengers. Um, and then, mm-hmm. uh, the Avengers and is it dark Knight rises? Is that Friday? The, the amazing Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man. Yes. We will have another guest on for that one. Blaine Rezach will be joining us uh, mm-hmm. for the first time in a year. I think he was last on for Batman 89. So that'll be a long time coming and it'll be nice to have him back. Um, uh, but yeah, With that, I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And thank you very much, Michael Muehlberger, for joining us once again. Oh, of course. Always always enjoy these times coming up here and chatting it up with you guys. Always learn a whole bunch because you guys are – your minds are just way up there. Um, Enjoy enjoy these podcasts a lot. Oh man, we we love having you. You're obviously, one of a uh, one of my best friends, if not my best friend, of fucking uh, near feels like fifteen, almost twenty fucking years at this point, which is man. absolutely insane. Uh, got got a fucking college graduate over here. Look at this man. That's Congrats, right. Look, by yeah. the way, buddy. Um, degreed up, boy is degreed strapped. up. Now um, now we have legitimacy as a podcast. We have we have college graduates on. Okay, mm-hmm. get with it. You know, an um, engineer over here. Yeah, this is uh, uh this is it's certified, you know. Um mm-hmm. but uh 
Yeah, with that, we will conclude. Remember, peace, love, and bloom. And I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they come from.